Now, I don't like, usually, to, uh, to play up the stories here, but we quite often have a category of, it happened again. But there are some things that we never thought would fall into that category. And yet, and yet, so, uh, we will, we will be exploring some terrible things tonight. Brace everyone. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, that's, that's a word for it. That, that is, that's a word for it. All right. Let's get the intro rolling. Holy shit. Each week, Catherine, the Radio Dead Air audience go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, all sorts of horrible stuff, and bring it back here for a little segment we like to call Crazy. What the fuck is wrong with you? And we're going to start with this one. And I love, this is a story I actually love because I get to use a line. And I, I, it, it's, it makes me, it kind of makes me happy because it's one of my favorite movies. And I get to use a line tonight. Um, let me send you the link over here. Let's begin, shall we? Are you sitting comfortably? All right, come on up. Drag the screen. There you go. Cam's over here. There it goes. This is from Pasco County. Um, Where's under Pasco County. I believe Pasco County, Florida. If I'm not mistaken. Why not? Um, underwear bandit caught by Pasco police in hilarious capture. They're not lying. Never did work out phase two. Ah, I see what you did there. All right, come on. Screen. Hey, ah, behave yourself. Um, I'm going to have to reorganize my screens. It's been getting irritating for me lately. Nah, I like that. It's been getting irritating lately. Like that. I'll cut that bit. Anyway. Underwear bandit caught by Pasco police in hilarious capture. Late last night at approximately midnight, the proprietors of CM Motors uh, were alarmed to witness an individual amid a car theft attempt on their premises. You going to come up or not? Up, up. You going to come up? All right. And Pasco police catch their own underpants, Captain Underpants and car theft attempt. The vigilist, bi ba uh, the vigilist business owners observed the perpetrator smashing the windows of two Kia vehicles in an apparent bid to abscond with them. Problem. You don't have to do that. It was a whole meme how easy it is to break into a Kia. <laughs> like, don't you have the TikTok, son? Uh, right? Promptly responding to the call, officers arrived on the scene just as the thief was maneuvering one of the stolen cars out of the lot, only to be thwarted by the strategic positioning of a Pasco uh, police patrol car. Subsequently, the thief abandoned the vehicle and fled on foot into the residential neighborhood north of 20th and Lewis. Despite the thief's attempt to evade capture by traversing fences and navigating through numerous backyards, officers maintained their pursuit and successfully cornered the student, the suspect. Ultimately, the perpetrator was apprehended while hiding beneath the boat. The thief, identified as a 15-year-old juvenile from Pasco, was found wearing and underwear. you don't have TikTok? was found wearing underwear as a makeshift face covering. Hopefully it was new. Son, do you know you have a panty on your head? Been dying to use that one. Thank you. Whoever this kid is, thank you. Been dying to use that one. Um, Hopefully he bought it new. They don't say. They don't say. I mean... What are you doing? You, now you want to come up? You want to come up? What? Are you, figure out what you're doing, y'all. I got them. I got Charlie and Grady both kind of circling me and like. 
I don't. If you're, I mean, they know who you are at this point. You're not, you're literally not fooling anybody. They are, they are. I mean, at least he was doing crime instead of just trying to get around COVID measures. <laughs> like the last four people we yeah. had doing this. Yeah. I, I just, it's, it, it, of all the things you can't even do, like this, this would be my first resort if I had to try to hide my identity quickly. Very first thing I would do is this. Is it super effective? No. Is it underwear? Also, no. But no, I mean, and that I would have probably known that my first bet, my first idea when I was 15 would not have been to drop trowel, grab my underwear, shove it on my head and run. Hopefully. I don't think I, I mean, was that I kinda, stupid. I kind of doubt he did that. He probably brought a pair with him for that purpose. But where, where because did who they... has time when they're being chased to take off two layers of clothing and your shoes? Where did they come from, though? That's that's the question. I, I just it's. Thank you, you do not have a bright future in crime, young man. Thank you for letting me use a Coen Brothers quote, though. I appreciate <laughs> that. that this, this made me happy. Next up, this motherfucker. Have you ever been bumped from a flight? No. I have once. It sucked. It's, if you're not familiar, if you don't fly, I don't know how you cannot be familiar with this, but Bumping is when, because the airlines overbook. They book Routinely. more. They book more people on the plane than the plane has seats because they're counting on a bunch of people not showing up. When everybody does show up and you're not, it's like, I don't know if it's first come, first serve or what. You say, they say, well, you can't get you on this flight. Normally what they that do. That you paid for. That you paid for. Normally what they do is say, we'll try to get you on the next one or the one after that. So it is a frustrating situation. It is irritating. Because those are also oversold. Yes. So you are at, entirely at the mercy of whatever airline. And as we have seen lately, that's not a good place to be. So this motherfucker thought, I'm too important for that. And when you get the entire, it's bad. But then we get to the entire story and it gets worse. All right, so let's go here. Texan bumped from Salt Lake flight, tried to fly home a stowaway. Now you're thinking to That's yourself. A fucking Texan. Now, now. Now you're thinking to yourself. How does one stowaway on a modern airplane? Did he crawl in the luggage? Oh, no. If he had just crawled in luggage, that would have been stupid. No, this guy is a motherfucker. Texas man is facing a federal charge after he, after he claimed he kept getting bumped from his flight. So he allegedly tried to sneak on a plane by taking a picture of a child's boarding pass when she wasn't looking. Wow. Fuck you. Wycliffe Yees Flirizard. I'm not making that's a, not a real name. That's not a name. That's his that's the name. Wycliffe Yeves is Eves. Y V E S. How do you spell that? How do it's you pronounce it? Eves, like Eves, Eves Saint Laurent. Wycliffe Eves Flirizard. Flirizard. That definitely sounds like somebody's eleventh gen Torridor character. <laughs> Was charged Monday. District Court of Utah with being a stowaway. On Sunday, Flurizard boarded a Delta flight in Salt Lake City, headed for Austin, Texas. After getting on the plane, Flurizard was spotted opening the door of the emergency equipment storage area. A uh, flight attendant then directed Flurizard to the bathroom at the front of the plane. Flurizard spent a significant amount of time in the lavatory while others were boarding, and he did not lock the door. After boarding was complete, just after the aircraft doors were secured, he exited the front lavatory and made his way to the back of the aircraft 
and entered the back lavatory. When he got out of the bathroom, all the seats on the plane were full. Now, understand, that's why he kept getting, that's why he was bumped. That's why he could not get on the plane. There was no place to sit. This wasn't a case of, I'm just going to sneak on and maybe grab a seat. It's like an 11 o'clock red eye or some shit. I'm gonna just going to grab one. Nobody's going to notice. And if had he, had he pulled that off, that might have worked. That might have actually worked. A flight attendant, but but uh, Fleurzard claimed he was in a seat that was already occupied, but a flight attendant confirmed it was not Fleurzard's seat. On further investigation by searching his name, the flight attendants were unable to locate a valid ticket or booking reservation for him. The plane was forced to return to the gate where police were waiting for him. Officers went back and reviewed surveillance video and observed Fleurzard in the boarding area taking photos of multiple passengers' phones and or boarding passes while they were not looking, including a girl passenger. Footage showed Florizard using his phone as a boarding pass. The girl, who was traveling alone, attempted to get on the plane after Florizard. The system showed she was already on board. This... A little kid? A kid. A little fucking kid traveling alone. This motherfucker. But also then, how were there no seats? Hmm. That math you, ain't mathin'. What do you mean? Because if he took her spot and they didn't let her get on. No, they let her because get on. Because he. No, they let her get on. It said but, she showed she was already on board. Yeah, but obviously what they, it's, a, we, it's a kid. They're going to let her get on. That her, She was in her seat. Okay. But yeah, I mean, is this... So you thought you were so fucking important. Oh, what? He was flying on a buddy pass. So yeah, you're standby all the way. It's whenever they can get you on a plane. So this You didn't buy a ticket. So in every way, this motherfucker. Yeah. In every And he chose a child. A child. A kid alone who probably didn't know enough not to keep her boarding pass hidden to her it's like yeah like i keep mine in my pocket until i am walking mine's on to my the phone jetway. yeah mine's on my phone because i don't want anybody stealing it i'm paranoid like that so now he's not flying he's made the entire plane turn around and late He's facing federal charges all because he thought he was that fucking important. Fuck you. Here's the great connection. Uh, he said he was on a snowboarding trip to Park City, but needed to get home to Texas because his family was scheduled to visit from guess where? You get three guesses. The first two don't count. Utah. Florida. Florida. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, Florida. Okay. Okay. That's, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's. This is some Florida man bullshit. Speaking of. Here, we, yeah. Uh -oh. Nice little segue there. This guy also kind of a prick. Um. Florida man calls American Airlines passengers blue-eyed white devils, threatens to, quote, take this plane down. Chael Patel, 29, was arrested on two counts of battery and one count of disorderly intoxication. Florida man on American Airlines flight was put in a headlock, removed from the aircraft, and arrested after he called fellow passengers, quote, blue-eyed white devils and threatened to, quote, Take this plane down with all you motherfuckers on it. Patel, 29, was drunk when he boarded the flight from Tampa to Philadelphia on Tuesday and began antagonizing passengers, calling flight attendants names, threatening passengers, and aggressively moving through the aircraft. The report stated he was acting hostile after he boarded and, quote, began acting erratically, yelling and cursing at the passengers. Patel called passengers blue-eyed white devils. Threatened to take the plane down. He is also accused of slapping a passenger on the hand and face and spitting on them. 
Video footage of the incident showed Patel yelling an anti-Semitic slur at a flight attendant before he was put in headlock by a fellow passenger and removed from the aircraft. Quote, I'm trying to get to my home country and you people made it harder for me to get to my home country, he was heard yelling at one point in the video. Um, no, they did not. I think you'll find you made it harder you. for you to get to your home country. You and your accomplice Jack Daniels. He's a wily son of a bitch. You shouldn't listen to him. His advice is usually very bad. I haven't heard the phrase white devil from anyone like not in the nation of Islam in a long time. I know. So the nation of Islam used to have big rallies in Times Square, mm -hmm. which fine, you're allowed to do that, you know, freedom of speech and all. But there were... Like two times I was walking around the city with friends. And the thing about these rallies was it always like their greatest hits album always <laughs> contained a 10 minute track on the evils of the white woman specifically. Okay. That white, white women are the root of all evil. I can see it from a certain point of view, but there were there were like two times when I was walking around the city with friends and we kind of accidentally found ourselves right in the middle of the Nation of Islam crowd, <laughs> right when they started the white woman jam, jam session. You have never felt so white in your entire life. I mean, as being in the middle of the Nation Islam crowd, like I was just like, this is kind go. of this is kind of different, though. Like a lot different though. Well, yeah, it's a lot different. Like, I don't know how we intersect those two stories here. It was just the white devil thing made me think of it. Like, I, you know, get to, Jesus Christ, man. I've heard this story before. Guys, I've been doing this over a decade. There's yeah, going to be reruns, all right? going to be reruns. I, th this motherfucker. You're going to be okay. Why would you get so drunk before getting on a plane? That's, I never understand that. You don't either, because like I get airsick. Right? Not so much anymore, but I used to get really airsick, but like I take Dramamine and stuff. So I just feel like adding booze on top of that. I, ha I have been known bad to idea. waiting for a plane. I'll have a beer or so, but I'm not getting, I'm not getting shit faced. Before, because I'll tell you, just that the whole act of I need to finish my food and my shit and get to the plane before it's time to go. So I'm, yeah. I'm still, I'm all, I'm keyed up. I'm, I'm in, I'm in. Do you game do that mode. thing where you go and make sure your gate exists before you go pee and get a ten dollar bottle of water? Yeah, and you just got to go make sure that it has not left this reality. And I, <laughs> I have never, like, this fuck, like this fucking drunk. Just get on board the plane and yeah. like, okay. Dan used to drink while flying. Dan used to drink while flying, but he had a pretty high tolerance. And weirdly, like flight attendants loved giving Dan free booze. Every flight I was ever on with him, he'd order a drink. And I don't know what it was about him, whether he had some kind of mesmerizing stare, but he always wound up with like an extra bottle or they just slip him an extra cocktail on the sly. Male, female, didn't matter. That was his mutant power. He was just charming that way, I guess. Yeah. You know, if, if he'd been on the X-Men, he, he, uh, he, they, they wouldn't have taken him to the front line, but every time they were bringing people back to the mansion, he would have been the most popular one on the team. Absolutely. All right. Next up. For fuck's sake. There are things we have all in our life thought to ourselves, what would I actually throw down over? What am I willing to get in a physical altercation? about and we have we all have our lines and i like to, you you like to think the line you're given is noble in some way or another and then there's the guys who will have a royal rumble over an order of fucking fries at mcdonald's i mean how hungry am i <sighs> A tow truck driver upset with his French fry order got into an argument with the staff at a McDonald's Thursday. 
two Virginia sheriff's deputies were injured and five employees of a tow truck company were charged after a brawl wow. that began over McDonald's French fries. They were not fucking around. Tow truck driver upset with his French fry order got into an argument with staff. The argument grew when another customer intervened on behalf of the employees. Restaurant manager asked the tow truck driver and the group of co-workers with him to leave, but they refused. Management told the tow truck drivers they were trespassing. One still refused to leave. When a deputy attempted to arrest that driver, he tried to run away. As that man was being escorted to patrol car, other drivers surrounded a deputy shouting profanities. Deputies employed pepper spray. Another driver threw a deputy to the ground by his neck. Not the choke slam. Yep. The driver was tasered and handcuffed. Three other tow truck drivers were also arrested. All five were charged and released on their own recognizance. I don't think anyone who's going to start a fight over McDonald's French fries <laughs> gets to be on their own. Their recognizance kind of sucks, actually. How hungry am I? <laughs> also, what was wrong with the fries? It doesn't say. That's vital information. Right? Did were they get, cold? Were they, were they unsalted? Did he order a large and get a small? These are important questions. The other day I was getting fast food and I asked Sarah if she'd like some and she said yes and she gave me the order to get it. So I did. And I came back home and I realized her small fries was not in the order. So you know what I did? I split my large fries and called it a, called it a day. That's it. Well, yeah, you're not going to drive all the way back there and start a fight. Well, I'm not going to start Too a fight late. at all. <laughs> it's goddamn fr it's McDonald's French fries, for fuck's sake. Those are like top tier fucking French fries, dude. As fast food French fries go, like I, I know Wendy's gave their fries a makeover, they made them worse. No, my mine are uh I can't get them anymore. It makes me so mad. Top tier was steak and shake. Okay. Cause they had to season it. That was some good seasoning. I hate fries with seasoning. Hate seasoning? I hate it when they seasoning. do that shit. That's good. Season. And a lot of restaurants in Denver do that shit. They put like Cajun seasoning on the fries. And I'm like, just give me my fucking fries. I'm Irish. That's a hate crime. You can't fuck with my potatoes I unless it's a curly fry. That's a whole different category. I miss steak and shake so bad. They used to have one here. Then I moved to Illinois. They had one there and I hate there a bunch. And I came back here and the one they had here shut the fuck down. So mad. I miss my steak and shake. I finally ate Sonic for the first time after moving out here. And everybody makes such a big deal about Sonic, and they were okay. This is, uh, this is... I, just, I was disappointed I... to learn that their whipped cream is Cool Whip. The... Or at least it tastes like Cool Whip. The fact that you're just going to start an all-out brawl with the police because McDonald's got your order wrong. What do you think, Charlie? But again... As always, sounds about white. Because you know who doesn't get away with choke slamming the police? Mm. People that aren't white people. What are you doing, Charlie? Charlie's in thieving mode. I just see Taylor. What are you doing? Get from back. He's behind the monitors now. He's in thieving mode. What he will do is he will get up on my desk and look for something that it seems like I want to keep. And he will grab it and he will run the fuck away. And I never chase him. I don't know what he's expecting. I can't leave anything loose on my makeup vanity because Valkyrie will steal it. I have lost. I rearranged all the furniture in here last week. I found three pencil sharpeners. Um, the caps to two eyeliners. I'm still missing a whole last concealer. Whole tube of concealer. All right, we got another one here. Also falls into the category of these motherfuckers. Holy shit. This one's wild and horrid. And hey, everybody, it involves our favorite people in the entire world. 
Landlords. Landlord sentenced after firing guns to terrorize tenant. And they look exactly like you expect they would. Married couple has been sentenced after they tried to, quote, evict a tenant by entering the home with multiple guns and threatening the victim. On Tuesday, William Lobsher, 54, was sentenced on charges of terroristic threats, simple assault, and firearms charge. Candy Lobsher, 48, was sentenced back in October on the same charges. According to the uh, Clinton County District Attorney Office, uh, in September 2022, William and Candy, both of Lock Haven, attempted to, quote, evict uh, their tenants from a rental property uh, on German Road. Police say the couple entered the rental armed with three guns, including a 357 revolver, a Soviet-era SKS semi-automatic rifle, and a 380 pistol. Once they were inside the residence, the lobsters allegedly confronted a 19-year-old woman who was unclothed in bed sleeping. Candy then screamed at the woman, repeatedly revealed her concealed gun before ultimately removing the pistol and waving it at the victim. Meanwhile, police stated Williams fired at least five rounds from his rifle near the front entrance in an attempt to terrify and intimidate the victim. The victim immediately called 911. Law enforcement arrived on the scene, found the lobsters still armed, and placed them under arrest. Investigators learned the lobsters had started the eviction process in district court, but they did not proceed with the process before choosing to enter the residence armed. It gets better, though. After being convicted, the lobsters remained on bail after claiming they needed to make arrangements for their pets. On the day of the scheduled hearing, the pair did not appear in court. The two fled to Pennsylvania and were caught in North Carolina. Sentenced to 20 to 84 months, and Candy was sentenced to 144 months patrol with parole eligibility after 26. What in the fuck? What in the fuck? Not lobsters, lobsters. L A U B S H E R. Or S C H E R. Lobsters. What in yeah, the. Yeah, because if they were lobsters, they could have just used their little claws. Like, you began the process. You know what the process is. There is a, it's like, it's shitty to do, but there, it's there. They'll let you do it. You want to evict somebody? Here's, the, go for it. You can do it. There's the process. You decided, nah, we've got guns. That'll be fine. What is it you always say? It's not a remote control for life. Not a fucking shortcut. Not a shortcut. Like it, I don't. Yeah, and someone points out their pets are fucked. Hopefully, they did rehome the pets. Yes, dicks. I. It's just how would they think this situation also, was going to be? Imagine made? being that tenant, right? I'm like lucky. I've when I have rented, I have been very lucky and mostly had pretty good landlords. Mm -hmm. I have never had a really terrible landlord. I've had landlords that weren't like super on top of shit, but we're pretty nice about it otherwise. Had corporate landlords a lot. I've only rented from private owners and but both well, I guess I've only rented twice like me and both my landlords were women. And they were pretty nice about things. They weren't like the, you know, one wasn't always super on top of getting stuff fixed, but she was so, nice. So she didn't barge in with a Soviet era semi-auto rifle. Fuck no. The fuck do you even have an AK for? Christ almighty. I don't know if it's an AK or not. I don't care. The fuck do you have a fucking Soviet era rifle for? You know what's sad? so sad? What? You said, what do you need an AK for? And immediately my brain was like, I guess it wasn't a good day. <laughs> that guy makes kids movies now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're up to the last one. God help us. So I don't think there's any good preamble for this aside from we know it, it happened again. 
Holy shit. Thirty centimeter eel removed from man's gastrointestinal tract. Because of a bad restaurant, right? I, I don't I don't think they have a thirty centimeter. I'm, I, let's double check because I'm, I'm 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 an ugly American. I'm gonna see uh see thirty centimeters. That is because of a really shady restaurant, right? That that is this big. That is a foot long. That is a foot long eel. There's a picture. Oh. There you go. Foot long eel. Man in northern uh Quanang province. Was sent to a medical center for an intense stomach ache, only to be revealed later as a 30 centimeter long eel inside his gastrointestinal tract. Patient uh, was sent to a medical center Wednesday. Ultrasound and x rays revealed that an eel was located within his gastro gastrointestinal tract. It perforated his intestines, resulting in peri uh, perionitis. Perionitis. There it is. Per per peritonitis. Peritonitis. Which I assume is some type of sepsis. sepsis. Because the poop isn't supposed to be loose. It has not been confirmed exactly how the eel got inside the man's body. I mean, if he ate it, it would have been... Dead. Chompy. Choo, 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 choo. And also, like, stomach acid is no fucking joke. No, no, it's... it's... So... <sighs> How to like, go up the other way. There are two answers to this. One is, it's a mystery how an eel got into your intestines. In which case, I would be terrified to live. Or he ordered the soup. <laughs> but then, of course, there is the other explanation. Which is the, exp we, we know how the eel got in there we know but also like was he hoping they wouldn't find the eel or did he forget because he just went in and said i have stomach pain yeah did he think oh it's fine now it's been in there long enough like if it doesn't come back out that's problem oh arkel says that's some more yes 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 just for <laughs> Eels have teeth, my dudes. Why? Why in the? Why? Why in the? Why? Like... There has got to be some sort of sex toy that wiggles around, right? There's got to be. Someone must have designed something, right? With the express intent purpose. Pro pro Someone's got Probably. to. Have. Right. It's the internet. It's the 21st century. Someone has to have. That was an option. But no. You decided an eel was a better one. And I can tell you the eel doesn't want to go in there. Mm -mm. So that was probably a challenge in and of itself. Also, like that poor eel. That poor what a way eel. to die. That's that's like, you know. I don't know how sentient eels are. <sighs> but that's a terrible way to die. Like. <sighs> like you made your choices. So I don't really feel that bad for you because you made your choices. The eel, poor eel was not given a choice. The poor eel. Like, what the hell? For God's sake, man. How are you just you're looking at that and you're going, that's going up my butt. Live animals don't belong inside of you. There are many options. You could, it's a wide, wide world of silicon and vibration. We have made many advances. It's, it's, it's a wondrous time to be alive if you want to shove things in your holes. I mean, 
Is it? It's a golden age. <laughs> Same day yeah, shipping, Tara. To be... Same day shipping. It's a golden age. It doesn't. It doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to. Why? Why does the eel know? Dipshit. The first thing. No. And th that's the thing. If you've been here long enough, you realize this this has happened before. And more God, than once. More than once. I'm pretty confident we have one guy stuff one up his urethra. I don't even know if that's better or worse. <laughs> It shouldn't, it, they shouldn't have to be like, you know, oh, you remember that time you had the story about the guy who put the eel up his butt? My response shouldn't be, which one? Which time? Which time? Charlie. He's trying to lay down behind the monitors. Well, you're looking at the monitor, so and he's, he's, he's going to go there, so you have to look at him. Buddy. <laughs> Please, no, no. Ugh. I will have attention by force if necessary. So, we learned many things this week that we did not want to. Just don't put live animals anywhere inside your body. That's the first thing we learned. Please. They don't want to be involved. They cannot no. consent. And they are not made to go there. We have made things to go there. Tested and safe and just not going to give you infections, not going to put holes in, just not going to try and eat its way back out. God have mercy. <laughs> like, Jesus Christ, we've learned. And like, think about, is it more embarrassing to get that product in the mail or to have to go to the ER with a live eel up your ass? Because I'd rather get the box. We I don't give a fuck what the Amazon driver thinks of me. We've learned that if you try to shortcut an eviction by way of firearms, it's not going to work out real well for you. Mm -mm. You know what? It's, what sucks is they probably got evicted anyway because the landlords got arrested. So they have to find a new place to yeah. live in. Fuck. Although I would be pretty hot to get out of there by then anyway. We found that it's probably not a good idea to, to start a Royal Rumble over an order of McDonald's fries. A lot of things. How to, hungry am I? A lot of things to bleed for in this world. McDonald's fries. Not, not one of them. Not, it's, I'm not, not sure I 100% agree. They don't put you in Arlington for dying in the McDonald's parking lot, Tara. Not going to Arlington anyway. <laughs> I wasn't even a Girl Scout. Uh, we've learned that do not get on the plane drunk. We've also learned do not get on the plane if you don't have a fucking ticket, and especially do not steal a ticket from a little girl. What the hell? Just leave little kids alone. And you know, you know the motherfucker tried to talk his way out of it, too. You know he did. Presumptuous son of a bitch. He is not my favorite person. I don't like him. And finally, <laughs> we've learned there are many ways to conceal your identity. Underwear on your head, not a good choice. Because, <laughs> well, when they arrest you, and if you put underwear on your head, you're going to get arrested. That's, that's a given. And you have to go sit and lock up. You're going to be the guy who put underwear on his head. It's, it's not going to be like, you know, Jailhouse Rock with, with Elvis. It's, it's not going to sound cool. Not going to sound cool at all. Not going to go well. <sighs> oh, fucking hell. 
God damn it, Tara. It's what even? It's what the fuck even? Grown ass men putting eels up their butts. It's I don't even remember. How can it happen? How can I not remember? It's happened so often I can't remember. I'd have two nickels, but it's weird that it happened. 